Good morning and welcome to Rising. We've got a great show for you today. Brianna, what do we have? Our panel is going to break down some new NBC polls that show how voters are really feeling about inflation and growth. And we'll discuss the return of masking in New York City, Robbie's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So this weekend, the U.S. saw a string of racial and politically motivated violence as shootings broke out at a predominantly black community's grocery store in Buffalo, New York, and then a California church attended by mostly Taiwanese parishioners. That incident killed one and injured five, the latter incident. In fact, over the weekend, eight U.S. cities were in the victims of gun violence, including Milwaukee, Dallas, Chicago, Houston, Amarillo, Winston-Salem, and most famously, Buffalo, New York, where at least 65 people were shot and 17 fatalities. Now, Democrats and mainstream media are calling out Fox News, specifically Tucker Carlson, for his past rhetoric involving elements of the, quote, great replacement theory, allegedly, that motivated Buffalo's uh, presumed gunman, 18-year-old Peyton Gendron, to open fire. On CNN, Jim Acosta and company called for the NFL and Comcast to stop funding Fox altogether. Let's listen. When the New York Times recently ran an expose on Carlson's record of promoting white nationalism and replacement theory, he tweeted out this, a picture of himself holding up the article, the front page of the New York Times, and laughing about it. Uh, Derek, as you know, millions of people absorb this garbage on a regular basis on his program. Fox does nothing about it. Uh, they make millions of dollars off of it. We have not shied away from calling that out uh, and calling Tucker out on this program because what he is doing is very dangerous. Um, what do you think can be done about this and, and what do you say to all of that? Well, first of all, Fox News is funded through carriage fees from Comcast and other platforms. And that funding is a result of News Corp getting an NFL contract, which generates millions of dollars. The, the advertisers for NFL, the NFL must stand up and tell News Corp to drop Fox News, stop funding them. Meanwhile, late night host Seth Meyer also dedicated screen time to calling out Carlson and Fox for the tragic shooting, as well as MSNBC, according to Kim. Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre had this to say when asked by reporters about Carlson's influence. Let's watch. Does the White House believe these views are being amplified by Tucker Carlson? Look, you know, like I said, we are still figuring out the motivation of all of this, uh, and we are very clear. Look, um, you know, as you all know, watching what happened in Charlottesville was a major uh, factor in the president deciding to run, right, and back in uh, 2017. You know, many of those dark voices still exist today, and the president is, a, is, is determined, as he was back then, and he is determined today, to make sure that we fight back against those forces of hate and evil and, and, and uh, violence. So that's what we're going to keep doing. Uh, that's what we're going to continue to call out. But we reject hatred and extremism ideologies. Yeah, what's interesting to me is that in some ways I think the focus on Tucker Carlson is shifting the conversation away from a place that would be more useful, which is whether or not the broader discourse around replacement theory that has been a present in many different shows and many different platforms on the right impacted the shooting. You know, a lot of people have made much of the fact that the shooter didn't reference Tucker Carlson specifically, that he is not in an age demographic that would have watched Tucker Carlson. I've seen all these kinds of arguments being made, and that's fine. I think that generally speaking, folks are right to say that you can never draw direct causality in these instances, or more often than not, you can't, because most often they don't say, I literally did this because so-and-so told me to. Sometimes they do, but most of the time they don't. What we do know is that he talked about the, grace, the replacement theory. We know that he um, that this is a, something that Tucker Carlson has embraced kind of unabashedly. And I think there's a bigger conversation to have about some things that liberals have done that have fed into that narrative as well. For years, they did kind of advocate responsibility for convincing the public and speaking to voters and meeting their needs because they thought that immigration trends were going to bolster the Democratic Party regardless of what they actually substantively did. And I think that interaction between the, the broad left making those arguments and the right then picking up those arguments in a nativistic way is interesting and people should talk about it. But I'm afraid that by focusing too much on Tucker Carlson, you're ultimately limiting the conversation and absolving people of responsibility for the broader kind of nationalistic conversation that you know, is arguing for a version of America that kind of affirmatively excludes non-white Americans. Right. A, a, a 
theory that is, I mean, obviously a conspiracy theory, so flawed for many reasons, but I think even the more acceptable mainstream conservative view that we, we have to be against immigration, we have to prevent more immigrants from coming here because they are, you know, their values are different than the native populations, the native population, right? The white European people who live here, and we, we must prevent this because then we'll lose out politically. Like, that is wrong, too, because many of the immigrants, not all, but many of the immigrants who come here are more religious and more conservative, conservative. more capital. They come from places where socialism is a dirty word. Mm -hmm. They are Trump loving oftentimes, mm -hmm. uh, whereas the kind of uh, very successful, affluent, highly educated white American is becoming a reliable bastion of support for the Democratic Party. Immigrants are much more split. So the whole idea is actually very wrong. The, the idea that a lot of, I think, more mainstream conservatives. Now, this, this theory, that the Shooter's Manifesto, if you read through it, he also, you know, he attaches this to a deliberate plot by Jewish people, by the Jews, right, to export non-white people to America. And that's the part where I think you have a hard time identifying it to any tangible conservative media agenda or person who taught, because there's not a lot of, like, there's none. There's no railing against the Jews as like puppet masters. In, I mean, there's some of it in a, there's some of it on the far right fringe. There's some of it in the, uh, the left wing fringe. It doesn't, it just doesn't show up in a lot of mainstream discourse well, to look, my mind. Well, it, look, it's, it's difficult because to, you know, Karine Jean-Pierre's point, we did get launched into this whole kind of political media landscape by the Charlottesville protests where they were pretty vocally saying the Jews will not replace us, the Jews will not replace us. Right, the crazy people, but that doesn't get covered favorably at all. There isn't, For sure, there isn't criticism of, of the Jewish people. In fact, there's wildly pro-Israeli sentiment it, in conservative news. But it's also news. true that, that 20, the 200,000 word New York Times expose, whatever you think about it, I just did a deep dive on it on my show, but whatever you think about it, one of the things that it points to is that Tucker Carlson's production process is to have producers comb through exactly those kind of extremist websites and find the stories that are motivating people and galvanizing people. And whether or not he is actually articulating those specific messages from those websites, the people who frequent those websites and run those websites have said out loud they really appreciate that Tucker Carlson is a better interlocutor for them in advancing much of their messaging than they've ever been able to do. And so that doesn't mean that, you know, there's a one-to-one -one relationship there. But again, I would rather be having a conversation not about Tucker Carlson, but how it is that somehow all of that kind of rhetoric is making it to the mainstream or at least making people feel like that it's more acceptable. And regardless, even the, the particular angle about um, the influence of you know this you know, alleged Jewish cabal aside, this is a person, this is a shooter who was expressly anti-black and white supremacist. There is some cringing around the use of the term anti-white uh, supremacist because it has in some cases been, been overused. I am frustrated in this context that it feels like there I am hamstrung and even talking about the reality of what happened in a very explicit conversation where someone has written, here's your reparations on a gun before seeking out a black neighborhood and killing a bunch of black people. That even now it feels weird, you know, there's this hesitation to say it because I know some so many people are at a point where they do not believe white supremacy even exists. I mean, th this and person is, is, a a white, is a white nationalist or a white supremacist. I, if anyone right. is going to, no one should deny that. But, You'd but be a people fool like to Tucker that. Carlson explicitly go on their show and say, what what, what is a racist? What is a white supremacist? Do these things even exist? And really cast doubt that there is any quarter left in the United States of America where something like this can happen. And I think that is dangerous. Yeah, well, they, they do exist. This person is certainly one of them. So here's how journalist Glenn Greenwald uh, kind of responded to this sort of Tucker blaming the media's so-called selective reaction in his mind to the Buffalo shooting. He cited the now infamous House GOP baseball practice where Congressman Stephen Scalise was shot in the hip and almost died at the hands of a diehard Democrat, Maddow fanatic, Bernie campaigner. Uh, it, this was Glenn's uh, take home, it's madness to assign moral or political blame to mass shooters. Glenn also highlighted who the shooters' influence were, influences were in his manifesto, which included other mass shooters, but did not actually specifically mention Fox or Tucker, and on the contrary, actually described his hatred for political conservatism in his manifesto. 
Journalist Judd Legum disagreed with Glenn's assertions and noted Tucker's past commentary on immigration. In April 2021, Carlson allegedly said that worst attack on our democracy in 160 years was the Immigration Act of 1965. So the, the other thing, though, that I definitely wanted to bring up, uh, and I, I bring up often when there is a, a violent episode like this, is we are very focused on a small cat what is thankfully a small category of violence we do have a lot of violence in this country we have a lot more violence in this country than a lot of our peer countries which is alarming the overwhelming majority of that violence is not politically motivated it's, sure. it's motivated by workplace uh animus uh domestic violence uh g generic crime poverty uh, poverty all sorts of things a one of the one of the on the cat, re, list of reasons why people in America kill each other, very fat, far down the list, is uh, a, a politically discernible hatred. Mm. It gets a lot of attention when it does happen, and I, from looking at the statistics, it looks clear to me like it has ticked up a little bit in the category of of right wing political violence in the last fifteen years or so, but it's still not a lot compared to all you know people. People just get shot to death sometimes in Chicago, like every weekend, every day. Right, but Robbie, in the context of a weekend of horrific shootings, I don't think it's inappropriate to spend some time thinking about why it is that hate crimes are on the rise, that you know the FBI and what have you have signaled that there is this growth of hate groups, and particularly uh, you know, ones that are, are using the internet in new and interesting ways to grow their ranks and recruit people the way that you know, these chat functions in a lot of these gaming sites are actively reaching out to young, impressionable kids, trying to hit them with exactly the kind of messaging that seems to have motivated um, at least one of the shooters this past weekend. I think it's worth having a little bit of a conversation about. And, you know, particularly when we're seeing, you know, you know, I, I'm friends with Glenn. I love Glenn. But the idea that we can't assign moral blame to a shooter is, I think, we can say, <laughs> no, I, I think he's saying we, we should inaccurate. blame the shooter. We shouldn't blame necessarily the broader, uh, you know, media. I mean, there's a lot of, and I'm going to talk specifically about the social media aspect of this in my radar next. So I want to save that discussion for that. Uh, but no, I, I certainly think it's right. It's worth having a conversation. I mean, we're having a conversation now about, you know, what are the roots of this kind of thing? I absolutely think. Um, conservative media should, you know, turn down the. T I don't. I don't even agree on the immigration. I think immigration is good, and a lot of the immigrants coming right, here but, but are not. So they. So I disagree, and I think they should turn down the rhetoric on a lot of that stuff. But th but this is the conversation. I mean, we want to talk about Tucker not being couple, and I understand that it's not about any one person. You know, just because someone says they like a person, it doesn't matter. But when you have messaging that you can point to, what you couldn't say about Bernie Sanders is that there's something in his message that says go to baseball parks and shoot people up. When you have someone saying I'm motivated motivated in the shooting because I don't like immigrants and they're making the country worse. And you have a number of commentators right. that are saying the worst thing that ever happened to the country was an immigration act that let non-white people into the country. It's difficult to well, separate went, that messaging then, out from the cause and, then he went and, and he went and killed black people, not right. immigrants, which, is, which, which doesn't is, which is another consistent thing with the manifesto. But Black which, people have been here. But which <laughs> also undermines some of the race-blind claims that Tucker Carlson makes, right? Because he talks about this idea of legacy Americans and that all he's trying to do is maintain the American character. Well, when this country was founded, t Black Americans are 20% of the population, tw double what they are right now. But nowhere in his screeds is he talking about how to maintain the cultural purity of a predominantly Black or a, dis a more Black right. country than we're in now, right? And he's not calling for more immigrants from Africa to make sure that we get, or, or Caribbean or wherever else, to make sure the numbers get back up to where they were in 1776. I, if, if we're trying to maintain our cultural purity, I'm far more <laughs> worried about what comes out of our own elite institutions than what we export here from the people who are coming here to work hard. Yeah, well, fair work. enough there. <laughs> I, and I look forward to hearing what's in your radar next, Robbie.